so you're probably here because you watched Edge Runners or want to get into playing patch 1.6 with some mods, and I don't blame you. I had a comment on my Cyberpunk Shorts video asking for a tutorial on how to download and install mods for Cyberpunk 2077 on PC. I'm going to make this video assuming that none of you have any modding experience. I will go over the integrated Vortex mod manager installation as well as the manual installation process. Hello there. First off, you need a mod manager. Vortex Mod Manager is a good option and it can be found on the Nexus Mods website, the same website where you will later download the mods for your game. Also, you'll want to create an account on the Nexus Mods website. On screen now is a link to a 6 minute tutorial by Epoxy that shows you how to download, install, and completely set up Vortex Mod Manager for any game. The link to his video is in the description below, so go watch that and get everything set up before you come back. Or do it on your own. Look, it might look like I'm being a bit lazy here offloading the installation process to someone else's video, but he made a much better tutorial than I'd probably make, so uh, back to the mods! Once you have Vortex Mod Manager completely installed and your Cyberpunk game directory is properly linked, you may now head over to the mods page for Cyberpunk 2077. When you're on the home page of the website, you should see Cyberpunk 2077 come up as a game option. Select it and begin browsing. I would first suggest looking at the Popular of All Time tab. You can scroll through a list of mods, and at the very bottom, click View More. You'll be able to flip through different pages starting from most popular to least popular of all the mods listed in the Cyberpunk 2077 category. If you want to search for something specific, you may also use the search bar at the top, or click on the Refine Results tab to filter your search results. Some mods may not appear on your search. You'll need to enable adult content on your Nexus Mods account. Only do this if it is something you're willing to do and are over the age of 18. I think I legally had to say that. Okay, so by this point in the video, you should have Vortex Mod Manager installed, your game directory linked, your account is signed in, and you've found a mod you wish to install. In this video, we will use the Let There Be Flight mod, or the Flying Cars mod, as an example of how to install a mod through Vortex Mod Manager. So what you're going to want to do is, when you're on the mods page, you basically see the description, files, images, videos, posts, uh, the description will give you everything that you need to know information-wise about this mod, including how to install it, how to configure it, how to start it up, and use all of the controls. Now, if you go over to the Files tab, you'll see right here the main files. The main file for this is just right here. You could do Mod Manager Download. That's what we're going to do. But don't click it yet. Do not click it yet, because we have to go back to the description, and we got to make sure this mod doesn't have requirements. A lot of mods are going to have requirements, meaning this mod, Let There Be Flight, will be dependent on other mods for it to work in your game, or else your game is probably going to crash and not work. So if you go here, you see this slide, and it has five different requirements. Now, luckily, these are all very easy to download, so we're actually going to download one of these first, just to show you the process of uploading it into Nexus Mods. So here we are on the Script Extender mod for Red Engine 4. If you go over here, you look at the requirements, this mod does not have any known dependencies, so you're good to go. You just have to do this and click download. Really quickly, as a reminder, make sure you're logged in on the website and also logged in in your Vortex Mod Manager. Now, go to Mod Manager Download and click it. It will pop up Open Vortex. Obviously, you're going to want to click that. Click Open Vortex. It says I already have it downloaded, but would you like to download again? We'll just go for the sake of it. Continue. It says it's downloaded, finished. Now you just click the Install button, and it'll install it. And then it'll ask you to enable it, and you click Enable. In my case, I'm not going to because I already have it downloaded, so it's pointless. And boom, that was, that was it. You got your first mod downloaded. Now, assuming that you got all of these other four mods downloaded right here, you'd be able to get the Let There Be Flight mod because it has these other four mods it's dependent upon. So you just click here and do the same thing. Mod Manager Download, click Download, click Open Vortex, and it will start installing it into Vortex right here. We click Install, and we click Enable. So just to make sure we have it installed properly, we just type let, and boom, there it is, let there be flight mod. If it gives you an error that are unresolved conflicts, in my case, I just download the same mod twice, just disable it, that's it, boom. Now, I can't stress the importance of testing your mods in-game enough, especially if you're going to download something as big as the let there be flight mod, where it changes a lot of your control systems and how your cars even work. It has five different requirements. So just make sure when you download a mod that big, you go in-game like I am now, and you test it, and uh, you'll see that there might be some issues. Now, according to the mod, you just press E, and it should work. It's not working. 
What did I do wrong? Alright, so that's not working. Uh oh. That's not good. Uh, this is odd. Alright then. Alright, so if we press E, it should just. Oh! Holy fuck. Oh! Oh my god, it works. Alright, uh, okay. So, space is left. Anyways, what I did to fix this was I just made sure I had all the requirements installed properly, which I did not. So, that's why installing requirements properly is very important. But once I got them all fixed up and I relaunched the game for like the fifth time, I saw that the mod, yes, indeed, did work properly. Now, after you've downloaded your first mod, you may want to go and get more, but you might come across a problem. Here we are on the Arasaka Corpo Shirts Archive XL, just a random clothing mod that I found on the Nexus Mods page. If you scroll all the way down, you'll see there's only a manual download option. What are you going to do here? Well, you're going to want to click Manual Download, click Download, and you'll get a RAR file or a 7-zip file in the bottom left. Drag it to your desktop, and right-click. You should have a file unpacking software. I highly recommend 7-zip to do this. You just get 7-zip, and you should be able to right-click a file, go to 7-zip, click Extract To, and it'll take you to a folder on your desktop. Now with this folder, you just want to open it up, and you'll have two files. Sometimes it'll depend on which kind of cosmetic you're replacing, but for example, we have the R6 and the archive folders right here in our mod file that we just downloaded. Pull up your game directory and place the two folders side by side. First, we're going to replace the archive. On the left, it's your Cyberpunk game directory. Click Archive, PC. Click Archive, PC in the mod. Click Mod, Open Mod. You just copy these and you Control V into this. If it gives you this prompt, just click Replace Files and Destination. Now go back to the default folders again. Right here we have R6, so you open R6 in both. Click Tweaks, Tweaks. Open this. And you just copy it into the Tweaks folder right here. And replace file and destination if you need to. And that's it. When you get in game, all you have to do is pull up a console, typically using the tilde key, and type in the item ID to spawn it in your inventory. Now you may be wondering, where the hell is the ID? Go to the description of the clothing mod you downloaded, and scroll down until you see where the author added the ID codes. Right here is what you're looking for. And that's it, you've manually downloaded a mod. I hope this video was helpful for any of you who made it this far. If you did find this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe and give some feedback in the comments. This was actually the first long form video tutorial I've edited since I made my first video eight years ago on a Minecraft tutorial, which is now privated on my channel because it fucking sucked. But still, go check out some of my YouTube shorts and I'll see you on the next video.